I don't have a ton of context for Prince Valiant other than a quick breeze on the old Wikipedia. Apparently he's a Nordic prince who hangs out with King Arthur's knights? I remember seeing this in the comics section of the newspaper, along with other serious comics like Mary Worth and Rex Morgan MD, but what kid read any of these? I feel like Valiant is most remembered today because of this amazingly stylish haircut. I mean, damn. The NES game, The Legend of Prince Valiant, is based on the 1991 cartoon of the same name. I do not remember this, which is weird because in 1991, I feel like all I did was watch TV, but so far, that's also been my experience with Funhouse, Fox's Peter Pan the Pirates, and Widget. Snap! It even had voice acting from Tim Curry and James Avery. That's a dynamic duo right there. My real question is, why was this only released in the PAL regions of Australia and Europe, when both the cartoon and the comic strip it's based on were American? Like, I get why Asterix was only released over there. That and Tintin are purely a European obsession, but is there a huge Valiant Club over there as well? I know there's at least a few pal buddies out there who watch my channel, so if you've got the scoop on Prince Valiant, please let me know ASAP. It's eating me up inside. Let's check out the cover. I mean, it's pretty solid, honestly. The comic strip art always has Valiant rocking that helmet haircut of perpetual virginity, but here he's way more stylish, looking more like he's maybe just the bass player for Deep Purple. This cartridge is from France, as evidenced by this little fra in the bottom corner, and this fabrique au Japon at the top. My favorite thing about this cartridge that I never noticed till now is that the original owner scratched their name into it. Not just once, but twice. And the marker to top it off. You see a lot of people's names and even phone numbers written on the carts, but I really love Thomas's dedication here, like, uh-uh, no way is anyone stealing my precious Prince Valiant game. And if they do, I'll know. A lot. Thomas, if you're out there, I didn't steal your copy. And while I'm not giving it back, I will leave your name on it as an eternal tribute to your paranoia. Does it work on my North American NES top loader? Hmm, yes. Let's go. Alright, so you start in the marsh, and it's pretty standard platforming fare. B shoots, A jumps. Something about the colored enemies popping up real quick reminds me of Bad Dudes, which I unfortunately played a ton as a kid. The combat is fine, but there's some annoyances, like enemies popping up out of nowhere, or these bow guys who you can't attack, or the fact that you can duck, but if you fire while crouching, you'll stand up. The bigger issue with the controls is that the jump is one of those you'll just barely clear it kind of jumps. I don't know if it's me anticipating that I'll miss my target, but whenever I leap over these pitfalls, I always find myself inadvertently making the same grunting sound. Also, I love when he runs, he tucks his arms in real tight, but then when he jumps, he jabs both fists up in the air like, I'm a coming lord! I've played Prince Valiant a few times and always gave up after a few too many plunges into the swamp, so I was completely surprised to see that the second level is actually a first person rail shooter in the vein of Lethal Enforcers, but closer in style and gameplay to another ocean oddity, the Untouchables. This is pretty cool actually, with some solid hit detection and some better than first level graphics. Moving the cursor with the D-pad is just as cumbersome and slow as it is in the Untouchables, and unfortunately makes this stage way harder than it needs to be. The introduction mentions taking cover behind trees, but try as I might, that is not an option. The only way to avoid damage is to shoot first and ask questions later. Speaking of the introduction, each stage has one, and I've never really seen intros this useless before. Usually games have a quick cutscene, or a brief overview of the stage, or even no context at all. But Prince Valiant has these comically long patronizing briefings. Like here for instance, all this text is just to tell you that Valiant set off a booby trap and ended up in some dungeons. It just goes on and on and on. And it's not setting you up with any objective like there's a key to find or someone to rescue or something. Just completely outlining what's about to happen when you play the level, which is pretty funny when the subsequent cutscene does exactly that in three seconds. Get this shit out of here! You know, these supposed enemies don't seem very menacing. They honestly look kind of like regular old peasants who are defending their home from a foreign Viking invader. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Prince Valiant is the villain of his own story. 
All I could think of while blasting these poor people was the scene in Holy Grail where King Arthur is arguing with the farmers. I am Valiant, and I am your prince. I didn't know we had a prince. I thought we were an autonomous collective. The third level was yet another surprise, a puzzle dungeon. Man, I had this game pegged all wrong. It's chock full of variety. Here your goal is to avoid traps like barrels and buzz saws while hitting these targets which in turn control these timed doors. They weren't kidding when they used the word maze, and what I initially thought was pretty linear turned out to be a, hmm, where was I going again? Everything here kills you in one hit and will absolutely test the limits of your jumping and your sanity. The fourth level is, man, this game is wild. It's another first person shooting level, but here you man these cannons and blast ships out of the water. You fire with A, swap between cannons with B, and you can use the up and down buttons to change the distance of your shot. It's pretty fun, and a really interesting gameplay design I haven't seen in an NES game. You kinda need to dodge what's immediately in front of you while perfectly judging your shots, but then also switching regularly between each cannon to avoid them getting exploded. After that, back to the dungeon with more traps, more enemies, and more confusion. I don't know why, but every time I get killed by one of these traps, I bust out laughing. Something about how quick and random and oftentimes unavoidable they are gets me going for some reason. Like this key here. No big deal. Just jump. Wait. Jump. Alright, let's head back. <laughs> Wait a net? <laughs> that rules! And that's the whole game right there. I'd sum it up as part Prince of Persia, part light gun game without the gun, with a little Bayou Billy and even a dash of Rampart thrown in. As someone who enjoys analyzing old games that are interesting if not particularly fun, Prince Valiant offered way more than I expected. From that first level, you'd assume that this would be as lazily designed as it is programmed, but as the game progresses, you'll be impressed with how much detail was shoved in here. This could have been a totally phoned in license game like the aforementioned Peter Pan and the Pirates, but it instead offers variety in a way that makes this kind of worth exploring. I initially wrote this game off completely, but the more I play it, the more I start to understand why Thomas was protecting it so feverishly. I wouldn't recommend it per se, but I do think there's enough distinct elements and surprising ingenuity that it's worth giving a spin or two. Hmm, maybe.